A few weeks ago, we had dinner with a clinical psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist, or a head doctor, and I asked her how many times a day she thinks about death, and I got a look that indicated the answer was zero, and I was abnormal for asking. But they say to exercise your fears, you have to address them. So today we're gonna walk around, and I'm going to identify every time I think about death. Why are you playing with my phone? Electrical cable, not plugged into the wall. Safe. No, you gotta leave your shoes on. Uh, and this is, I'm not making this up. Take it with us. I'm not making this up just for humor value. These are literally thoughts that go through my mind every time the same thing happens in a day, every time I think about the fact that at that very moment, I might die. It's a tough life. Swimming. We haven't gone to the pool yet. Like, like, like lightning. Like, I can't get it out. It's a boom. Thought about it. Going into an elevator. Go, 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 go. Get in there, get in there. Let's go. The elevator. Thank you. The elevator can slip as you're getting into it, chopping you in half. It actually happened. Look it up. He's going swimming. In theory. Oh, in or the he's pool? no, he's just gonna he's gonna, he's got a poo. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. So when Elisa and I went off. Getting out of the elevator, getting chopped in half, but that counts as the same if we're going in the elevator. So that's just doubling it up. Yeah. Drowning in a pool. This one is not so much my fear because I'm not gonna drown in a pool as much as other kids. Get out of there until I'm in the pool. Getting mauled to death by wild Canadian geese. Although that's really more of a chicken or a rooster type fear. True story, we actually know someone whose mother was nearly killed when a rooster jumped up, pecked a hole in her femoral artery and she nearly bled to death. Stay away from wild Canadian poultry. When I sit under trees during a windy day, getting crushed to death by falling branches. Tell them, how many times have I talked to you about that? Literally every time I cross a street or a bike path, getting clobbered by a car or a bike. It happens all the time, people. When I go to the zoo, the ways of dying are infinite. Getting kicked by a goat, getting kicked by a horse, getting mauled to death by a... Those are the, the peacocks. Do not, don't feed the animals. Please do not feed the animals. Yeah, I'm also yeah, not gonna respect that. But yeah. You might see a beautiful reindeer behind me. I see a rusted fence that can give you tetanus leading to death. I've had my tetanus shot, so I'm good for another seven to 10 years. How you doing? Good. Look at the hair on its antlers. Boy, he's squatting so hungry. This is exactly what I was gonna say. You're a smart kid. You too. There, there. He's gonna show me his butt because he wants me to pull out his his fur from his his winter coat. But I can't. A little closer. A little closer. Okay, he's gonna go down. Look at how they sit down. You see that? There you go. Now look at that. Can I get there? Can I get there? He needs to get a little closer, and I can pull out his winter coat. Yeah, it feels good, eh? Oh yeah, can you get his face when he's doing it? Okay, oh gosh, I'm down. This is uh, tripping on things. Also, you can fall and break your neck all the time. This is a reindeer. Oh! That was a peacock. This is a reindeer that's losing its winter coat and it wants us to like scratch it off, but I'm doing it, it's my turn. So we got a stick and watch watch the reaction of this elk. What is it, a reindeer? Reindeer, whatever. When it, when you get, look at this. Watch it, watch it. Oh. It's like scratching an itch that they can't get. They're losing their winter coat after the winter season. Oh, it feels so good, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Overflowing sewers can cause giardia, leading to death. True story, look it up. Playgrounds, death traps. Do you see the kids climbing up that slide over there on the outside of it? What can happen to them? Leading to? Oh, and by the way, the wood chips, the wood chips do nothing. Play safe. How do you get to the slide? None of, the, none of this is safe. Oh, I see. Oh, what's that? Three stories up? Oh my god, look at this. No. Yeah, we're going down that slide. It's not safe. Too many kids going down all the time. Unsafe. Where are your parents? This is like going down a black hole, except it's red. I can't move! 
Oh, oh, okay, we're down, we're down. Ow, this isn't fun, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, getting stuck in a slide. Hold on, don't come down yet, people! Take it out of here! Move it! Get it! Children, someone's coming down! Oh, it's like being born again! Oh, get out! This is terrible! Someone's gonna break my back! Looking down, six tires. You can hit your head 15 times before you even hit the ground, I'll tell you what. Coming down. Oh gosh. I can't. I can't. There we go. Oh. Not safe. You want to come down? Don't step on the camera. Was that good? Do you appreciate how dangerous that was? No. <laughs> Randomly placed pieces of broken glass. Infection leading to death. Even if they pulled that sword out, they wouldn't be able to play with it. Risk of death. You see the dog? You see the dog? Oh, you're so cute. Of all the times in a day I think about death and the possibility of death, petting a dog is not one of them. Apparently your odds of being mauled to death by a dog are... Yeah, no, Barney's definitely not gonna do anything. Your odds of getting mauled to death by a dog are one in 10.6 million. To put that into perspective, your odds of being struck to death by lightning are one in 5.5 million. You are two times more likely to be struck to death by lightning than mauled to death by a dog. Mm-hmm, it's true. Google it. It just never ends. Did you know that you're twice as likely to get struck to death by lightning God. than mauled to death by a dog? Why Toronto is death day? Toronto is death day. Why? <laughs> I always think if I fell into that cesspool of water, I would surely die of a heart attack or ingest some of the water and then die from bacterial infections and poisoning. That water is so dirty. That is water from like the Princess Bride when they were in the forest. Do you see any rodents of unusual sizes in there? Odds of getting attacked by an emu? He looks <laughs> Flinch. You made me flinch. <laughs> An emu can kill you with its bear claw right there. That not its bear claw, but its its claw, like not the bear bear claw, but its own claw. It can take that and what it does is it like, jumps up and it slices your belly open and it disembowels you. So if you ever see an emu in the wild, steer clear of it. In a fight between an ostrich and a lion, it's a 50-50 battle. Yeah, but this isn't an ostrich. It's the uh, same family as an ostrich. Anyways, it can kill you with those feet. Stay away from me. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. It's raining. It's the worst time that it rains <laughs> in this country. A little rain has never gotten anybody wet. Wait, Daddy, so far, no lightning. You'd think we're safe, but lightning can stretch to 75 miles long. You could be in a sunny day, no hint of rain or anything, and get struck dead by lightning. True story. Okay, people. Oh, I wasn't expecting that much rain. Did you know that life is 100% fatal? Good thing that we're in the At least for now. Who knows? But Many. <laughs> and she's the scientist. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day we'll live forever. No one wants to live forever. All right, children. Moral of the story: Life is 100% fatal. Don't take it too seriously, or you may never make it out alive. And the other moral of the story is, everyone dies, but not everyone truly lives. You still have a brave heart! I did, but we just, we looked it up today and we saw that that was actually the motto of the movie. Peace out. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the history of zoos was generally that rich people used to used to capture animals and then keep them on their private property as like just not trophies but they used to have them there as, as evidence of their wealth and then they slowly started letting in vets and other people who wanted to inspect the animals and could otherwise never get the chance or the opportunity to inspect them and then they eventually opened them to the public where they were on private estates and they would charge an admission fee I think this was like in the early 1900s and then they became a commercial thing